and welcome back. The Arduino only has a relatively small number of digital outputs. While there are enough of them to get us through all the examples in this course, in real life they're probably not going to be enough. Take for example the case of a gadget that contains a character LCD screen, a couple of status LEDs, a couple of buttons and a couple of sensors, and a Wi-Fi breakout. You will need two pins for the screen, using a serial to parallel adapter, two for the LEDs, two for the buttons, at least two for the sensors, and six for the Wi-Fi breakout. That's more than exhausts the available ports. Sooner or later, you will need a way to multiply the available inputs and outputs so that you can connect a larger variety of peripherals. In this lecture, I'll show you how to use shift registers to multiply the available digital outputs. In a later lecture, I will also introduce you to I2C-driven port expanders. These technologies make it possible to design ever larger and realistic gadgets using a single low-cost microcontroller. Before getting into it, I should highlight that more available ports does not automatically guarantee that you will be able to create larger gadgets. Once the input-output port availability is dealt with, the next potential showstopper is memory. At 32 kilobytes of flash memory, it becomes difficult to create sketches that match the ever-growing hardware they are supposed to drive. So, also in a later lecture, I will talk about ways to manage and optimize memory use. What is a shift register? Think of a shift register as a single byte memory. Each of the bits in this memory is connected to the outside world via a pin on the package of the chip that contains the memory. You use a single data pin from the Arduino to write each bit, one at a time. Because each bit is written individually and all bits can be read all at once, we say that a shift register is a device that supports serial in and parallel out. To support the serial transfer of bits from the Arduino to the shift register chip, we need a second pin that provides a clock signal. Every time the clock ticks, one bit is transmitted from the Arduino to the shift register. Once the new bit is received by the shift register, all existing bits are shifted one by one to make room for the new one. This shifting process is what gave the name shift register to the device. Let's go through this process graphically and see what happens. Let's say that we'd like to store the uh, byte shown in the screen in the shift register represented by this table. At start, the shift register has an undeterminable state, so I'll represent this with a question mark. Each cell of the shift register contains an undeterminable bit, it could be 0 or 1. This is what we have in step 0. In step 1, what happens is that the least significant bit of the byte that I'm trying to store in the sh shift register is pushed into the shift register one at a time. So you can see now that the leftmost bit of the shift register contains a 1, which is the same value as the least significant bit of the byte that I'm trying to store in it, right above it. The same happens in step 2. The byte that I'm trying to store is now shifted one more place to the right. So now we have the shift register that contains a 0 and a 1 in its first two cells, which matches exactly what the byte right above it is, the one that I have just inserted. The same process continues. Step number 3, step number 4, step number 5, 6, 7 and 8 and now we have the complete byte stored inside the shift register. The little question mark uh, at the very end on the, the rightmost part of the table uh, right now it contains a question mark. I call that the overflow bit. If I had continued shifting bits into the shift register then you can imagine that the um, 
the question mark would be replaced by, by whatever bit happened to be on its left cell. We're going to use this feature later on in demo 2, when we connect two shift registers to one another in a daisy chain fashion.